best cars under 10K to pick up chicks. All right, uh, but this is gonna require that we step into the field. Let's do it. So I picked four very different everyman cars under 10 grand and let some ladies rate them from one to five stars. And every person is different and associates different things with different cars. But I thought this would be good to know for uh, research purposes. And then this one. Four, three. 3.7. I like the view yeah. and the tires, the rims. Yeah. I give it a four. 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 Zero, uh, is that option? Zero. Before we get into the results, let's firstly go over the cars and why I chose them. Firstly is the Chrysler 300. This is a car that's easily attainable under 10 grand, albeit with high mileage if you want a facelifted model. And I chose this car as opposed to the Dodge Charger or Challenger because while they share the same platform physically, I think many people can easily perceive the standard Charger or Challenger as a Hellcat model if they're not super into cars. So I didn't want things to be unfair for the rest of the cars in the lineup. So I'm here with- McKenna. McKenna and- and Hallie. Hallie, nice to meet you guys. Nice so you. we know that the car doesn't make the man, right? But I think everyone at least has a preference as to what they would prefer their significant other or first date boyfriend to pull up and like pick them up and take them out. Oh, yeah. So I'm gonna show you four cars and then you're firstly gonna give me a rating out of five for each one and then we're gonna pick the best and then you decide, you tell us why. Throughout this entire video, there's gonna be a lot of autofocus parts in these clips and I deeply apologize for that. Trust me, it hurts me more than it hurts you. Okay, so here's the first one. What would you give this out of five stars? Three, 3.7. So right off the gate, we got the Chrysler 300 with a three and then a 3.7. And a part of me feels like she kind of threw in that 0.7 just to have a different answer from her friend. 3.7? Okay, that's specific. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like that was a bit artificial. But you know, we'll, we'll run with it. What would you give this out of a five, five stars? Five. What kind of car is it? It's a Chrysler. Uh, I don't, uh, I'll give it a three. Three? Five. It's like mid. First girl says five, out the gate, like she was sold on the car, completely sold on the car. And then when her friend comes in, not really sure about it, when I tell her the brand. It's a Chrysler. Uh, I don't, uh, she's like, uh, uh, uh. you can literally hear the numeric rating going down with the tone of her voice. Brand name to a lot of people is very important, apparently. Five. It's like mid. She says it's mid, uh, I mean, I feel bad for the Chrysler 300 guys, you know, the people who are watching this who have a Chrysler 300 hearing her call it mid, you know, I'd be, I'd be a little hurt. What would you give this out of five stars, Liza? Um, I guess like a three out of five. Two. Hmm, I guess the uh, Chrysler may be going in a downwards trajectory now. I mean, we'll see, but three out of five isn't bad. Um, two out of five though, not great, not looking good. We'll see how this progresses though. So here's the first one. What would you give this out of five stars? I give it a four. A four? That's the strongest overall consensus we've had on the Chrysler thus far. W for the Chrysler, I guess. Next is the Lexus IS250. This is Toyota's luxury car, and for $10,000, this is a pretty great starter option all around. And it still looks like a normal car, just not a super basic one. This one. Two? 2.7. Two out of 2.7? Okay. So then they flipped. The first girl that said 3.7 now is saying two while her friend is saying 2.7 for the Lexus IS250. So Lexus IS250 firstly, not starting off that great. And secondly, what is it with this 0.7 that they keep going back and forth on? I think we need to get to the bottom of this. Here's the next one. Uh, um, one. So a one and a five. I think this first girl, isn't really picky about cars. I think that's pretty apparent here. And the other one is very picky about cars. Um, the Lexus IS250 is not an ugly car to me. I think it, at least when you've got it cleaned up, it's a very nice looking car inside and out, at least for the money. Although I didn't disclose the price point to them. I really want to know what she drives. What is her boyfriend or her or her parents? What are the people around her driving? Because you know, these choices to her are apparently, you know, bottom shelf. Yeah. I think my grandma has that one. Uh, so yeah, okay, I, I get it now. When you apply the whole seeing your grandma drive it thing, you know, there's certain things you really can't detach, you know, when seeing certain people in certain kinds of cars. And when you grow up seeing your grandmother driving a certain kind of car all the time, you're naturally going to associate these things with, you know, elderly people in some cases. And, uh, like I said, that's quite unfortunate for the Lexus IS250 owners and fans out there. All right. That's like a 
They got a five. See, Liza here seems incredibly impartial to all the options so far. I feel like she was expecting options that would like wow her or truly impress her. And just the fact that she's saying just all these super basic sedans and stuff like that so far is kind of like, she's kind of like, yeah, just like, they're just cars. I think both of them are not really too picky about cars, I think. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting. Okay. Three. Three? Three. She was very like starting with that three, just like three. Yeah, Lexus is totally just a three, just middle of the road. I think the Lexus might honestly be the most down bad out of all the cars on this list, just in the sense that no one just really cares. The Dodge Durango is pretty much here just because I wanted an SUV in the list to gauge what the ladies were feeling. And this is a super attainable $10,000 SUV that isn't super old manny or looks super dated in terms of the design. Three. Three? 2.8. 2.8. Yeah. I think she just wanted to be like, okay, I've used the 0.7 too much. Now we got to throw in an eight just so I feel like I'm actually giving different ratings here. I'm just messing around. This could be genuinely how they feel about the cars. And honestly, I mean, I don't know. The Dodge Durango is not that crazy to me as a car. It's at least it's something that you would want to be shown off in. And then this one. Oh, four. Zero, uh, is that option? Zero? So the ratings just keep going down. She's very opinionated about these cars. So the Dodge Durango gets a heart crushing zero. Right, crushing zero. No W's for the Durango thus far. And then the other girl gave it a four. So, I mean, is that a W? How does that like even out, you know? Either way, it's not looking good for the Durango. I'd probably give I that bigger cars, I think. What are you giving it? Three again. I'd give it a two. So the Dodge Durango, we got a three and then a two. So I think statistically, by far the bottom of the totem pole right now. And it kind of makes sense. It's not like a, a flashy looking SUV. Yeah, I don't know. I'm starting to think maybe was the Durango a wrong choice? Should I have gone with something else? Well, I mean, you know, we can always run this back with a, an entirely new list of cars, an entirely new uh, group of interviewees. So let me know if you want to see more of this in the comments below. All right, this one. And three, I give it a three. Yeah. So the Durango gets a three from both. Interesting. But either way, this is the best overall rating that the Durango has gotten thus far. And the last is the BMW 328i convertible. This is the most exotic option on this list and arguably the most flex worthy with the hard top convertible, but it's still a car you can definitely get under $10,000 depending on the year and mileage. And I thought it'd be cool to throw in for variety's sake. And last one. Two, 2.6. 2.6. So, I think you guys gave the first one the highest rating. Yeah, I like the color, yeah. I think it just looks like the most, uh... I like the view, yeah. and the tires, the rims. Not yeah. So, I picked the BMW in blue thinking that maybe the blue would carry the car more so than, you know, the hard top convertible aspect of it. But the fact that the Chrysler won, especially with it having this pretty basic boring gray color, I found that pretty interesting. I'm not trying to say any of their opinions are wrong here, but, just interesting. And I think it's good for you guys to know as well as 99% of you are guys. Okay. And then this oh, one. Oh, five, seven. Seven. Okay, so clearly the enthusiasm shot through the roof for the 328i. And you know what? This is the redemption we needed after the last round because that 2.8 and, you know, having twos, that, that's, to me, that's unacceptable. What is it about this one that makes you like it better than everything else besides the fact that it's a convertible, is that it? Yeah, like the open air. And you guys gave this one the lowest one. Why did you give it the lowest rating? Just doesn't appeal just to you? A no, gut instinct. Know. Yeah, it just feels wrong. When a girl says a car just feels wrong, you know? And so yeah, don't get a Dodge Durango, um, at least if you're interested in these two women right here. This one. I don't know if that's like too like, feminine. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna like a convertible. Yeah, I feel like that'd be fun. I'd give it like a four. A four? a four? A four? I guess they're both like, since it's a convertible, since the top can drop, I guess we have to give it a four. So that makes me think that I could have maybe showed them any convertible from any brand and they would have probably been down with it if it was a two door. Well, I mean, yeah, most convertibles are two door, duh. But yeah, I feel like I could have showed them any convertible and they would have been down with it just because of the fact that it's convertible. It doesn't seem like the fact that this car is a BMW really means anything to them. So you picked this one the most just because it's convertible? Yeah. And then I think this is the one you, I think this was the lowest one. No, 
Oh, that was the lowest. That was mine. That was your lowest like, one? Now that I think about it. I mean, that was just like uh, an average funny. car. Like, I mean, I wouldn't be mad or too over happy if like that picked me up. Because you got to remember, different people come from different places. There are certain people who live in areas where if you see a BMW, you might, you know, look back at it as it passes by because you don't see BMWs often. There are people like many of the people in this video who live in situations where BMWs are more or less the, the Hondas, the Toyotas of the neighborhood in terms of the cars that everyone has. So... You know, sometimes brands don't really mean much to certain people who are used to certain things. And last one. Four. Four? I don't like that one, three. Okay, yeah, I don't like that. <sighs> this one's kind of a head scratcher. So the gray Chrysler 300 gets the four on both ends and the blue BMW convertible gets a four and then a three. Like I said, I don't disagree with any of these takes. I can't because they're just, you know, I'm just fielding, I'm just surveying basically. But I don't know. I feel like that one just doesn't sit right with me. Okay, so why do you like the last one the most? I like it because I like the model of it and I like how it has the top down and I think that's like a vibe. So why do you like the first one? I don't know. It just came in stylish like that. It's a vibe. I it's classic. <laughs> so she said she likes the Chrysler 300 the most because it just came in stylish. That's exactly what she said. And I wonder if that has anything to do with the angle of the car or in terms of the photo, the way it's presented in the photo. I wonder if that makes any difference uh, to them as far as the rating they give it. Because the gray is a super, you know, it's a super just normal color. It's not really poppy. It doesn't stand out too much. So... But I don't know, I think, you know, I think this proves more than anything that every woman and every person in general just has different tastes, even when it comes to automobiles, even for non-car enthusiasts. So now that we know what they thought in all of their ratings, let's add this up and figure out who won. So firstly, we've got the Chrysler 300 with a three, 3.7, five, a three, another three, a two, a four, and a four. Then we've got the IS250 with a two, a 2.7, a five, a one, a three, a three, a three, and another three. And then the Dodge Durango with a three, a 2.8, a zero, four, three, two, three, and another three. And then last, the BMW 328i with a two, a 2.6, uh, a five, a seven. I mean, I said out of five stars, but she said seven. So hey, we're throwing it in there. And then a four, another four, another four, and then a three. So let's just do a drum roll before we declare the winner, which you might be able to tell who that is already. But I figured let's just do a drum roll because I could actually do a drum roll. So the winner coming in with a 3.95 overall rating is the BMW 328i convertible. BMW boys, we're up, okay? We're up. This is a, a great W, one that I kind of expected but also wasn't so sure on. And just in case you want to know, the other overall ratings, the Chrysler 300 got a 3.46, so the second highest. The IS250 got a 2.83, the third highest, and then the lowest was, of course, the Dodge Durango with a 2.6. So overall, these scores aren't that far apart, and I think the biggest lesson uh, to take away is that a car does not make the man. This is what I said to every interviewee before I showed them the car. The car does not make the man, fellas, so if you go out and buy one of these cars, it's not gonna automatically get you one of these girls. I feel like that's just common sense, but I felt like I needed to iterate that. But overall, I had fun doing this video, going out and filming it, and then looking back at the footage uh, some weeks later. It's definitely uh, something I want to do again. And if you guys are down for it, be sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed uh, and subscribe for future content like this. But we actually have to stop talking about girls and cars now because I have to actually go finish an actual car review I'm working on. But hey, to everyone who wanted to know the best cars to pick up chicks under 10 grand, don't say Miles Somerville never did nothing for you. All right, see you later. I'm what you call a Bavarian man, you know? So to hear the BMW pretty much get the lowest rating out of the four between both of them, it hurts.